Hey, so I'm here to talk to you about one of my absolute favorite programs that I use with kids, and that is Flipgrid. Um, I've been using Flipgrid for about two years now, and um, I just, I really, really, really enjoy it. Um, and the kids seem to really like it too. So I want to take you through how you can make an account um, and some just basics for how this looks. And then I'm going to make a video where you can share it with your students on how to use it. Most students know how to use it. They've used it in a lot of their classes, but just in case you have one that hasn't. Okay, if you've never used this before, then you're going to go to flipgrid.com. Make sure you go to slash educator. Um, if you need to create an account, you're going to create one. I suggest doing a Google login, especially if you're going through your school district's Google account. It makes it a lot easier. It just connects everything a lot more smoothly. So um, we're going to log right in here. You can see mine is already connected. And then every time I come to log in, I just hit that. Um, okay, so you can see that this is my board from last year that I have archived, and this is my grid this year. Okay, if I were going to, basically what I'm going to do is every year I'm going to add a new grid so that I can keep my videos from the past, but I want to have a new grid for my new students. Okay, so when you're on the Flipgrid home screen, there's a lot of things that you can look at. You can, my activity, my grids, this stuff down here, mixtape, grid pal, disco, library, shorts. I'll make separate videos on those. So let's not worry about those right now. We are just going to do these grids here. Um, there's a getting started guide, which I really, really love. And I'm going to um, try to maybe do a video where I go through some of that as well. But you can just open that and read it. Um, they have a lot of really great resources to follow them on social media because they're amazing. Um, <clears throat> so basically what you would do, you're going to imagine that I don't have these here. We're going to add a new grid because this is where all your students are going to post their videos. So you have to have some type of grid. Okay. So you're going to give your grid a name. I'm going to call this fake, fake grid. Nope. I'm going to call it, um, I don't know, Harry Potter, look at, oh, look what my computer does, it's so silly. Potter is awesome, because we're gonna make a bunch of videos about how Harry Potter is awesome. Um, and then there's a couple of ways that you can make this, um, with, like depending on how you wanna make it, okay? So school email, um, students join using their Google accounts. Student ID, this is when you have to create a list of IDs and you enter them, okay? And then you can also make them public. So for um, like elementary school, I would suggest doing the student ID thing. You have to just make a list of your, um, however many kids you have and you add them in and then they're automatically there. For middle school and high school, I suggest using the school email because it's gonna be a lot easier for you to understand. So I'm gonna take you through school email first and then if we have time, we'll go back and we'll go through the student ID thing. Okay, so I'm gonna click school email here. And then I don't like the code that they just make. I don't think it's any fun. So I'm just gonna call this one Harry Potter um, Awesomeness. It's too long. <laughs> I'll just say Harry Potter awesome. Okay, so I'm um, gonna hit next. And you can see that I already have um, the, this email for the students here, but if you wanted another email address to be able, let's say that you teach in two districts or um, I don't know, if you have like one email for teachers and one email or one um, URL for teachers and one, URL for students, you might want to put that different. But for my purposes, I just put nazarethasd.org um, or um, Nazareth ASD students, you know, that kind of stuff. So it's there. Okay, and that's all set up. So now I have my grid ready. Yay. Okay. Um, I'd copy this link, and this is the link you'd have to give to the students. They'd have to have this. Um, now, again, if you added them already, it wouldn't really matter. You can add it to other things. Unfortunately, Schoology is not a thing that you can just add to by a button. You'd have to go to the copy here. Okay, so now I'm going to just go to my grid. So here's my grid. <clears throat> Oops, I'm sorry. Here's my grid, and um, I'm actually going to delete this because there is like a, a topic that they start you with, but I just... 
I, I like to make my own topics. Okay, so now we're on our grid and you can do a lot with this grid. Um, I'm going to go back and show you my grid then so that you can see what it looks like when it's set up. Okay, so you can do a lot of things here. Um, adding co-pilots would be like if you co-teach with someone, you can add them. Um, and just keep in mind that I, I just have five sections of the same class, so I make this one grid for all of them, okay? Um, so let's go back out to my grids here for a minute, and I am gonna delete this because, oops, again, keep clicking on the wrong things here, sorry. I am gonna delete this grid because I don't want it. So I'm gonna go to my grid for this year. So this is my grid for um, my students for this year. You can see all of our uh, different things um, that we did. You can see some of their videos and all of that different stuff, okay? So um, when you have all of these, when you wanna add a new topic, you're gonna hit add new topic, okay? And you just fill this out. So let's say that this topic was about, um, uh, let's see, maybe they're gonna make a video telling me about biomes. So I would call it biomes. Um, you can pick how long you want them to talk for. Now they can talk for less, at, this is like the most amount of time they can talk for. So one minute and 30 seconds is usually my what I go with because it seems pretty average. Five minutes would be like if they were doing a presentation, I'd give them five minutes. Um, if I only want a really quick response, I might tell them it's 30 seconds or less. It kind of depends on what you're looking for. If it's an exit ticket or something like that, maybe 30 seconds is good. If you want them to answer a question and give their opinion a minute 30, you're gonna have to play around with that. Here you would explain to them what you want them to do. So maybe I want them to tell the class about one of the Earth's biomes and why you would like to travel to a place in that biome. Okay, so that's what they need to do. Now, the rest of this is pretty much optional because you can see there's really not much else, but you can hit more options here, okay? And um, usually I add a funny GIF or something. You know, I um, I like to add GIFs or something just just to make it, you know, a little more, a little sillier um, for them. You can upload an image. If you want to record a video of yourself explaining what to do or giving them an example. So like maybe I would go on and be like, mm, my favorite biome is because, and I would show them how, how I wanted to do that. There's a lot of other things you can embed in into the Flipgrid or embed Flipgrid into, um, which is all listed down here, but um, I can make some separate videos on that. I've only ever used it with um, Nuzella and Kahoot and Google. So I don't know, I haven't used it with some of these other things, but it's definitely something that you can do. Okay. Um, so again, this other stuff is all optional. You don't have to do any of this stuff. Okay. Um, video moderation is something you might want to think about. This is, this means that you have to to look at the videos before the other students are allowed to look at them. I usually don't moderate my videos because my students are very responsible and they know not to do anything inappropriate. But if you're not comfortable with that, you would just um, hit this and then they would have to, you would have to moderate them. That means you're gonna have to go and look at them and activate them. Okay, student to student replies, that means that the students can reply to each other's. Again, I leave that on because I don't mind if they reply to each other. We've talked about respectfulness. This is a couple of different things. So active means it'll be active now. Um, they will be able to see it. They will be able to reply to it. Frozen means they'll be able to see it, but they cannot um, active uh, put anything in there. It's view only. And hidden means they can't see it at all. Usually I make things hidden until I'm ready to activate them. And then you can change the dates here. I, I usually just leave it at never and then I freeze them when I don't want any more videos. Okay. Um, all this stuff down here, video editing, sticky, I, I don't usually mess around with any of this. I let them do selfies and videos and I, they, they have fun with that. The idea is to get them to enjoy it. So I'm going to go ahead and create this topic. And then you'll see you get this 
um, code right here. So you can do a couple things. You can copy this and put it on Schoology, or you can um, download the QR code. Kind of depends on what you're doing with it. Sometimes if I'm doing QR codes like around the school or something, um, or like a scavenger hunt, I'll use this. If I'm just posting it on Schoology, I just use the, the link there. Okay. Um, and obviously you can see there's nothing in here yet. Um, if you decide, okay, I don't really want this topic, you would just, you delete the topic. Okay. And you say, yes, you want to permanently delete it. And then you delete it. Okay. When you have a video that you can actually see, um, you can see this is my, one of my videos that they can go into. You can see I've gotten a couple of responses here. They're all active. Um, you just click on them to watch them. So my plants are... Okay, you can give them feedback. You can actually set up a rubric and grade them on this if you want to, but you don't, you don't really need to do that. Okay, so hopefully this helps. Um, I'll do a couple other videos and share a few other things about Flipgrid.